Hi everybody, Crypto Chaperone here, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to use one of my favorite Bitcoin and cryptocurrency exchanges, Bittrex. Now, I am a big fan of this cryptocurrency exchange for a few reasons, and the biggest reason is mainly because I trust them. I trust them because they're located in the United States, they're located in Seattle, Washington. That's probably one of the biggest reasons why I'm a fan of them is because they're located in the United States. And if you know anything about cryptocurrencies, the United States is definitely leading uh, next to China. The United States is definitely leading kind of the uh, warfare against cryptocurrencies, uh, against bad cryptocurrencies, more or less. They're not really trying to crack down on people who are investing in cryptocurrencies. But any rogue cryptocurrencies or scams and kind of these ICOs in general... Uh, the United States kind of wants to get to the bottom of it, and one of the main reasons is because they're not making any money from these. They can't tax people on all these gains people are making. You see people who are making 500000 to a $1 million in some of these Ponzi scheme coins, and they are not getting taxed on this in any way. The government definitely wants in on this, so you know any place that runs in a highly strict place like the United States is going to be highly regulated, and they're going to be doing things by the book. You're not going to see the cryptocurrency exchange shut down. It's not run on some foreign server where you have the potential of somebody who's just kind of running this behind some like pseudonymous name that's not really their identity. It's kind of just like a Twitter name, and nobody really knows who they are. They're just a developer. This is run by actual people. It's They filled out the paperwork. They have a legitimate business. They pay the taxes and everything on it. That's the main reason why I'm a big fan of this. Now, if you do trade on any cryptocurrency exchanges, you always want to remember never to leave your coins in the exchange or anything in the exchange that you're willing to lose. So if you're leaving $500, $1,000, $10,000 in the exchange, just be ready to lose that if anything were to happen. But that's why I'm a fan of Bittrex because I see that as one of the lowest exchanges of possibly going under or just going bankrupt or anything possibly happening, getting hacked or anything along those lines. There are cryptocurrency exchanges who do hold more volume than Bittrex. So if there were a hacker to go out there, potentially they would hack one that was at the lower end that had less security, or if they were going to go all out, they might just take one of the bigger exchanges that has all the coins in general. So I just really don't see a hack as being uh, a situation that would happen to Bittrex. So I'm going to be talking to you guys today about how to use Bittrex, how to sign up for it, how to get your account going, how to deposit, and all kind of the basics of Bittrex and everything Bittrex has to offer. So if you go to bittrex.com, you always want to make sure you go to the right site, B-I-T-T-R-E-X.com. And when you go here, you might want to bookmark it once you get here to make sure that you're always going to the authentic site and you don't ever get sidetracked to a phishing site, which could potentially take any of your information, sign in, and send your coins out of your wallet to whoever. Another way to avoid that is potentially by putting two-factor authentication on your account, which I do have on mine, and I think everybody should have it on everything where it is potentially something you have any valuable information or valuables on. So any of your wallets, any of your accounts that does offer two-factor authentication, definitely take advantage of that, especially in cryptocurrencies where there are so many phishing scams going on, like in my Ether wallet and stuff like that. I'm getting emails daily about Coinbase. They're all phishing emails in my Ether wallet emails. Coinbase will send you an email that'll say, did you try to log in from this IP address in Germany or Afghanistan? It'll say, click this if you meant to, or click this one if you didn't mean to, and it'll try to have you sign into your account. Either way, it's a phishing site. And if you acknowledge it at all, you're going to get fished if you sign in. There are so many phishing things going on. And the best thing to do is to apply two-factor authentication to all of your cryptocurrency wallets, exchanges, anything where you trade money and you have valuables. You can go up to the top of the page. You can sign up here. Uh, if you get a login, it'll give you the opportunity to sign up for an account down here. If you sign up for an account, I think your basic account, you're limited to maybe like $2,000. You can pull out a day from your account or maybe a thousand and then there's the basic level one kind of tier i think you put in like your name your address stuff like that all your basic information your phone number and then after that is authenticated you can take out 
$10,000 a day. And then there's another level after that. I think it's like you can take out fifteen or twenty five or fifty thousand dollars a day, and you have to uh, put in your social security number and like driver's license and stuff like that. And unless you're like a major trader who's going to be just putting major money in this, leaving it for a long time to potentially maybe accumulate those high end, know your client, know your customer things aren't really necessary. Uh, I signed up only to the point of the ten thousand dollars a day because I don't see myself pulling out any more than that. If the market or something was to crash, um, I would just pull out all my coins. I mostly like to pull them out as I'm buying them, especially coins that I'm looking to hold for more than a few days or weeks. I don't really use Bittrex too, too often to buy coins to accumulate. I use kind of different exchanges where coins are rarely listed on for that. Bittrex I use more or less to just trade around uh, day to day trading kind of things. I haven't been using it too often for that, but it's a great thing where you can just instantly buy and sell and it's very clear on everything that's going on. The charts are very clear. They have some great candlestick charts. They have some just great price depth charts that will show you the buy and sell orders. If you've watched any of my Bitcoin manipulation videos, those are all taken from Bittrex charts and they're very, very insightful if you are looking to buy and sell. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But if you're looking to sign up, you can go to sign up. So once you sign up for an account, you can log in. And here we are. We're logged in. Wow. And I, I got a little bit of uh, Ethereum on here. And I sent these over last week, I think, or maybe a week and a half ago. But I put these over here. I had really, really no intention of buying or doing anything with them. I just kept them here for in case I saw a possible buy opportunity. You always want to make sure when you are sending any coins to this exchange to buy and sell, you want to make sure that you do take into consideration that it is going to take potentially maybe 15 minutes to an hour for your coins to deposit or even longer than that, depending on what coins you're using. If you're following the 24 hour charts and or the depth charts or something like that, and you see a great opportunity to buy, but you have no coins in your wallet at the moment, you might lose out on that opportunity. So it's also a good opportunity, a good idea to have uh, just a few coins or just a little bit of money maybe tied up in some of the exchanges for you to have at your disposal to buy and sell any of these um, volatile dips of coins but you always want to make sure that it's not more than you're willing to lose it's always a gamble once you sign into your account you have a lot of options of coins you want to deposit you can deposit anything from Ethereum to anything you're seeing here, Vertcoin, Pure, we could type in OMG and you can deposit OMG coins. You can type in Rise and deposit Rise coins, anything. Anything that is on this market that isn't really in a maintenance mode at the time or has something going on with the wallet, you can deposit onto the wallets and trade those, sell them, or do what you want with them. So initially when you sell or you deposit a coin onto this market, your only option from here is going to be to sell it for Bitcoin. Once you do that, you can sell it for Bitcoin and then from there you can take your Bitcoins and transfer them into USDT, which are US dollar tethers, which is kind of the controversial thing everybody's hearing about now that is tied to Bitfinex and that they could be potentially making more tether coins since tether is supposed to be tied to a one to one ratio of dollars that they have tied up in their kind of project, I guess you would call it. And they can only print one US dollar tether token for every $1 that they have. And people are thinking that they're printing off more US dollar tether tokens than what they have um, in their actual wallet or wherever they're containing their money, which could cause the US dollar tether technically to collapse at some point. It's risky to use that. It's a way for you to get into these other markets, which would be the money market side. I don't really mess with this too much. This is something if you want to take the chance in really high price fluctuations or volatile markets, you can potentially, when you're cashed into Bitcoins or whatever, cash out into your US dollar tether, and then uh, you can buy back in from a US dollar tether directly into these markets, which would be technically buying in with straight cash. So it would show these prices more on a straight cash um, correlation than what these markets show as a Bitcoin Satoshi correlation. If you want to 
withdraw or deposit any coins into your account you want to type in whatever coin you're looking for up here in your search and as it comes up you'll click on the plus to deposit and the minus to withdraw so if you click on the plus you want to make sure you read through all of this when you deposit um, ethereum you want to use a hex address and that is the newer addresses that they have after the uh, I think that was the ethereum classic split hard fork you would take this you would essentially copy this whole address paste it into your ethereum wallet wherever you're sending them from my ether wallet or uh, wherever and you would send your tokens to here then you could track your sent progress via your wallet and eventually after it gets confirmed into the chain you can go down under your pending deposits and it'll show up here and I think they need about 32 confirmations in the wallet before your Ethereum will essentially be able to be sold or show up in your wallet here. It could take anywhere from maybe 10 minutes to 30 minutes to an hour for that, depending on what your fee was um, that you associated with your transaction, your gas limit. On the other end of that, you have your withdraw. So to withdraw any coins, you would click on the withdraw button and you would type in your hex address which would be the address that is associated with your my ether wallet or whatever uh, wherever you wanted to send these coins potentially maybe even another exchange you would type in your amount that you are willing to send uh, you always want to take into consideration that there's a transaction fee so it does come out of the amount that you send so if you do send to ethereum when it does is all said and done, you're only going to get 1.998 Ethereum instead of two because of the transaction fee coming out of your sending amount instead of the amount that is still tied up in your wallet. So you always want to make sure that you send enough that you want to send. If you do want two Ethereum, you want to take into consideration that your fee is going to be added into whatever amount you're sending. So you're going to want to send your two plus the fee so the fee comes out of it. You can put in whatever you want. So I'll just put in random stuff for an example. Uh, we'll put in one and click send. After this, it'll tell you if you do have two-factor authentication, it'll tell you to put in your two-factor authentication code. Now the two-factor authenticator will show your code for pretty much like 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and only that code that is showing up on your device where it is tied to is able to use these authentication codes. That's a great way for you to potentially stop anyone from stealing your money. As long as your authenticator is completely tied to your own devices and you don't have anyone else tethering to those devices or any way for them to get into your devices to see at the moment, you should potentially be able to stop any withdrawals that you don't know about from your account. If I were to open up my two-factor authenticator, look at the code, I could put the code in here and click confirm and it would send the bitcoins to the address that I entered, whatever address that would be, and then it would show up under your pending withdrawals, and then it would show up with a transaction ID and everything under that and you would be able to follow that transaction ID, watch for it to be confirmed, and then it'll show up in your wallet relatively quick. That's a reason why I like Bittrex as well is because your withdrawals are decently quick. All of my withdrawals are pretty quick from here. The only thing that's kind of takes a while is my deposits because it takes such a long time to really confirm before they let it show up in your wallet. After you make some deposits, you can go out onto the markets. For example, we'll use my Ethereum that I have in my wallet. So I'll have to go to Ethereum before I do anything. If I don't, if I went to, let's say, Bitcoin Cash and I wanted to trade what I had for Bitcoin Cash, I can't do that at the moment because I don't have any Bitcoin available. And these markets are only running on Bitcoin or you can run on the other markets, which are US dollar tether markets. For you to have any funds to be able to spend on other tokens, you would have to go under the tokens that you deposited under your wallet and you want to look those up, which would be Ethereum for what I'm using. Since you have them in your wallet, you'll sh they'll show up under your possible sell option and you could sell your max Ethereum for either it'll give you a few options the last price that went through the current bid price or the current ask price so if you sell it for the current or the last price that went through 
it might not be the best idea because the last price that went through might be a percentage or two lower or even more than that than what the actual price is going for at the moment. You always want to make sure you're paying attention to the markets. If there's a huge buy wall down here, maybe sell for what the asking price is or whatever. I mean, whatever you're doing, however, vice versa. If there is a huge whatever sell wall or buy wall, maybe you don't want to add on to the buy wall or sell before it but then you run into the potential cases of accumulation. But if you are just looking to get rid of your tokens so you can trade them in any other situation, depending on how big the gap is from the buys and sells, you could probably just click on the uh, asks order, which would most likely be the highest percentage and sell it under the ask order or look up and see how fast the ask orders are going through and maybe sell it up a few ask orders into it. But you would, do it at your own discretion. Um, I'm going to add into this that I am not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. This is all just opinion. This is all things that I have found out through my own uh, due diligence, buying and trading and using this platform for probably about five or six months now, maybe even longer than that. I have not had any problems with Bitrix. I have not had to fill out any sort of support tickets or anything like that. Uh, I was on Poloniex for a while, and I did not have to fill out any support tickets on there. But as I did see, they were coming into so many problems with maintenance and taking so long for transactions to happen. And there was a lot of coins that weren't getting stuck in kind of uh, a withdrawal mode, but they weren't showing up in people's wallets. And people who were deposit or sending in their support tickets were taking three to four weeks to get their support ticket even answered. And then they said it would take maybe potentially six weeks after that for them to maybe even fix the problem. So there were people whose funds were tied up for two, two and a half, three, maybe even longer months. I never really see problems like that with Bitrix. So I immediately left Poloniex and went to Bitrix. Now my internet's apparently like not loading this right now. When this does load, there'll be a whole big chart here and you'll see all the price action that has been taking place for Ethereum. And you'll be able to see if this is a high point. If it's a high point, potentially maybe you'll want to sell your coins now. If it's at the low point of a dip, maybe you'll want to hold on to your coins for a little bit. I don't know why this isn't loading. Okay, say we sold our coins into Bitcoins. I don't really want to because I don't need to. I just want to hold my Ethereum on here for the moment. After you sell or buy um, your Bitcoins however you want to put it. You can go up to the top under the Bitcoin market and there's a few options of how you want to view this. You could view your coins by name, which will give it to you in alphabetical order. It'll show you all these coins and it'll show you up to six rows. So you could choose by name and up to six rows. And potentially it'll show you your alphabetical coins and it'll show you their um, plus or minus action over the past 24 hours or whenever the clock reset last. I think it goes by every 24 hours, but potentially the clock could have reset six hours ago and the coin could be on a massive pump at the moment. Or it could have reset 20 minutes ago and it could be on a massive pump and up 600% just because it reset 20 minutes ago and it hasn't had any real time to stabilize. So you can also do this kind of stuff on the homepage. If you click on all these buttons up here, if you click on this to go down or the up arrow, it'll give you your coins in alphabetical order, the same things it'll do up here. I'm just gonna show you guys down here because for some reason it's not loading at the moment for me. You can also do that with your currency if you wanna look at it by the currency token name, how it's on the exchange in alphabetical order. You can look at tokens by volume. Some of these tokens have had zero volume in the past 24 hours or since these coins reset. And you can look at the highest volume as well. So some of these coins have had 28,000 Bitcoins in volume, which would be Bitcoin Cash as well as NEO. Those two coins have had huge volume over the past 24 hours. Now, I don't want to get into this because this isn't a video I'm supposed to be talking about markets, but Bitcoin Cash is kind of a, a Korean tied token and NEO is kind of a Chinese tied token. They could be influencing each other. So that's potentially why we could be seeing such a big spike between those two coins gas as well as tied to neo so gas is going to see kind of a larger spike as well you can also go to the, your next column you can check the percentage changes which is pretty cool because if you follow this in kind of steadily markets 
what's down here today will probably be in the green plus 15, 20, 30 tomorrow. A lot of times you could just buy these today, sell them tomorrow, and you could be making a profit just buying all these coins that are down and selling them tomorrow when people start buying and doing the same exact thing you're doing. We go to the next column. You can check it in Satoshi price. It will give you from least to most or most to least Satoshi price. As we can see, the lowest Satoshi price at the moment is 14 Satoshis for red coin. The most is um, quite a lot of Satoshis. I don't know, like 1,672,000 or 16 million, whatever. I, I knew I'd start at the right, wrong column, so just said a lot. But Bitcoin Cash, a lot of Satoshis at the moment. You can also check their 24-hour price to see how much they've fluctuated with the highest that they've hit in the past 24 hours and the lowest that they've hit. You can check out their spread to see what the current spread is on the coin. I think that I'm not 100% sure what the spread is, but I think that might be potentially between um, buy and sell orders. So you have a 6% spread between your buy and sells, and you'll see these more on lower coins because one Satoshi and two Satoshis is a lot of money when your whole coin's only 15 Satoshis. The buy orders or the spreads are quite high just because it's one Satoshi difference, but that's the most or the least you can transfer is one Satoshi. You can't do a half a Satoshi. So you could use everything on here to your benefit. If you click on a coin, sometimes a coin will say it's getting delisted and it'll say when they are taking it off the exchange. Potentially it'll be maybe within a few days. They don't really give a very long um, heads up they kind of give you maybe like a week week and a half I think two weeks maybe max but sometimes there's coins that'll I don't know I'm, this isn't really working well because none of my stuff's loading it's making me look stupid right now the charts that load up here guys are really great they're definitely things that you could take advantage of while trading it the depth charts are amazing in any exchange the depth charts are definitely something you want to utilize and use to your fullest benefit uh, in all my Bitcoin and cryptocurrency manipulation videos, uh, you can see depth charts on there. Those are the charts that have kind of like the green wave going this way and the red wave and they kind of collide here and what those are buy and sell orders. And if you have a massive green wave here and just a tiny little, tiny little red wave here, that kind of insinuates that maybe it's a better time for you to buy or that coin might be seeing a potential pump. There's not many people selling that coin and at the moment there's a lot of people or just one buyer who has a very big need for that coin which could potentially pump the price so when you see things like that it might be a better time to buy or on the vice versa scale where you see it on the opposite end a very small slither of buy orders versus a big wave a straight up wall of sell orders um, it might be in your best interest to hold your coin because you may be selling your coins to potentially just somebody who's trying to push the price down or you may want to just sell your coins real quick at that point because the price may drop 10, 15, 20% after that and you could potentially buy the coins back and even more at a lower price. So you'd have to do what you want when you see that. That's kind of why I wish these were loading, but whatever. But if you look on here, oh wait, now it is. I was looking at the timeline, which are actually the candlesticks. So the candlesticks kind of show you, you can pick whichever way you want it to be displayed. You can pick five minutes, I think 10 minutes, 30 minutes, hours, 24 hours, 12 hours. And what that is, is it'll show you the trade volume, whether there's more um, buying or selling going on and kind of what the highest and lowest buys and sells were going on in those 24 or whatever time frame you set it for necessarily. So if it was loading, you would have these candles and the candles would have a wick coming out of the top and bottom and the candle would either be red or green. If it's green, that means that there was more buying price action taking place within that candle. If the candle is red, that means that there were more people selling during that candle's price action. And those wicks are the highest and lowest prices that did take place in that candle. So if you potentially, I'm gonna use dollars for example, cause it's just easier to say. If I was selling something and it was maybe $5 at the moment and all the buy orders and it was really big and a lot of people went and they started buying up and they bought all the orders up to maybe $10. 
and it even went as high as buying maybe a few orders up to like $13, but it wasn't a major buy. The candle would be green up until $10, and that was ma our major volume. And then you would have a little candlestick going up into the 13, which was potentially just a one buy order that grabbed those real quick, but there was no real volume up there. Or on the other end of the scale where you could be going in a red candle and you could have a wick coming out down to the bottom from maybe $5 and it's got sold down to $3 and you have a wick that went down to $2 or $1.50 or whatever. Based on those candles, you could determine um, if this coin is something you want to invest in. Maybe if it's had a lot of people that were buying up at high points, you could maybe potentially sell it at one of those high points and you'd have people that were trying to buy it up there. I don't really follow the, the timeline action too often. Those are my more indicators for future price, I think. More what I do when I buy and sell is I look at the order books and look exactly what is going on in the current market. Another option that is available on here, if you look at your coins, you can also just go straight to wallet from here and it will give you all the options to deposit or withdraw your coins that you do have straight from here. So say that I had a Bitcoin and I wanted to buy one Bitcoin of these art bites right now. I bought them and I wouldn't even have to leave this page to go to my wallet, which could potentially mess me up. I might forget what my coin is, have to go back, forget where my, what I bought, and I could be lost. You know, and a lot of people in this aren't really that tech savvy. They're people who want to get into this. They want to buy what they want and they want to get out. They don't want to learn all this stuff. It's real easy. Right at the top, you have your wallet and you could just withdraw it straight from here. The coins that you bought, you put in the address that you're sending them to. You put in the quantity that you want to send or withdraw out of here and remember to also include your fee and you withdraw it straight from here. You would also be asked to supply your two-factor authenticator code after you withdrew it from here as well. That way you wouldn't have to go searching for through your wallet. If you did go to your wallet though, it would be one of your top cryptocurrencies since it did have any available balance. Any currencies that you have in your wallet are going to show up at the top of your wallet. If I had five ethereum and six bitcoin and ten litecoin based on um their bitcoin value they're going to show up in your wallet so it would go uh the six bitcoin and then probably your ten litecoin and then your 1.8 ethereum or no 1.8 ethereum and then your ten litecoin however um, they're pretty close i guess if they weren't showing up necessarily you could just click it this way and balance and it would show up your balance from least to greatest greatest to least you could check on token name and essentially just do the same things you were doing when you were looking at the coin prices, um, alphabetical order for your tokens and all that. Any pending deposits, any reserves, anything like that. Reserved would necessarily be your tied up amounts that you have in sell orders. So if I made a sell order for, we'll go back, we'll go to this right here for our example. So if I put in the current price for First Blood is $0.32. Cents. If I sold, put in a sell order for $0.35, cents, it would show up further down on the sell orders page and it might not register right away. And nobody might not buy it right away is what I mean actually. But if you scroll down and you did put the order in, it would show up under your open orders category down here and it would show you what your bid ask price was. If any units were essentially filled yet, maybe... The price shot up real quick and maybe just two of your units were sold out of your 500,000 that you wanted or whatever and the actual rate that rate that it sold for you could put in your order for all of that and your order might just just be sitting there for a while and while you're looking at your bitcoin wallet that's what would show up in your reserve column since you wouldn't necessarily be able to use or withdraw or do anything with those tokens since your Bitcoin would be tied up in a buy or sell order or your um, whatever this is, your first blood would be tied up in a buy or sell order. You could also go straight over here under this X column. There will be a orange X and you could click right on that orange X and that would cancel your um, order, buy or sell order, whatever you had. And then that will give you the opportunity to withdraw or do whatever you want with your tokens or Bitcoin. You could potentially move them into another token and buy or whatever. If you ever are looking for some of your coins or wondering where they are, where the reserved is, you could always just go straight to this order right here under your orders tab. And any orders that you do have open will be displayed right here. We have no open 
orders at the moment, so we have nothing displayed right here. If I had potentially put in my sell order for Ethereum at a higher price, maybe $340, the Ethereum sell order would still be displayed here, and I could cancel it or leave it or do with it what I want. There's also another category up here called Lab which gives you the option to auto sell and do stuff like that. I've actually never gone under this tab. I don't really like messing with stop losses and stuff like that because that's a way for you to really lose money in this since it is such a fluctuating market. If you're not careful with that, uh, it could be potentially bad. Okay guys, so other than that, I think all we have up here is kind of our settings tab. And from here, if you have not put in your two-factor authenticator, you would be able to do that here. Uh, you would also be able to look at everything that you are authorized to do. I am only able to do digital token trading. I'm not authorized to do fiat trading or margin trading since I have not gone up any higher than the basic account verification stage, which anything higher than this, they start making you put in just more um, information about yourself, more personal stuff to verify that it's actually you and you're not laundering money and stuff like that. And when you do get into the fiat trading, you'll probably end up being taxed on it as well since it's actual cash money you're putting and taking out of it. And this is, like I said, a US-based um, company. They're gonna be doing everything by the books. It's gonna probably be getting taxed. Right now, um, my daily withdrawal limit is actually three Bitcoin, which at the current price is like 20 some thousand dollars so actually i think your daily withdrawal limit is actually set to a um, solid bitcoin number as bitcoin goes higher and higher that limit is going to continue to go up as well as people's money who is at, tied up in exchanges is going to continue to go up but i don't know why you would need to take out more than twenty one thousand dollars in a day you would have had to have put a lot of money in here to begin with and just left it for a while to accumulate value so as long as you're keeping up on stuff like that, you shouldn't have a problem with it. From here, you could do whatever you need to. You could change your password. You could do more verifications. You can do your enhanced verification, which is I think they make you take a picture with your license and stuff like that, and that'll get you to the next stage of trading where you can do the fiat and the margin trading. So I guess that's a reason why I also don't do take place in margin trading or take part in it because I don't have it unlocked. I wouldn't take part in it anyway. Mostly, the best thing you can do on exchanges, whether it's Bitrix, Bitfinex, Poloniex, um, Hitbit, Livecoin, whether it's down to the smallest things is like Ether Delta, where it's a decentralized exchange. You always want to make sure you're taking any coins that you have that you don't want to lose out. If you put in $10,000 and you're only putting them in potentially maybe to buy Litecoin, you're going to want to buy those Litecoin and withdraw those $10,000 of Litecoin. You don't want to leave them in here to grow because if Litecoin does go up um, an exponential amount, you're going to run into the problem of withdrawing your Litecoin, um, trying to fit them through that limit of whatever you are verified at, as well as maybe just this site runs into problems and maybe the Litecoin wallet goes into maintenance for however long and you don't have the opportunity to withdraw your coins. So you always want to stay ahead. You don't want to get stuck in a situation where you weren't prepared for. Other than that, guys, I think that's mostly the main parts of Bitrix. You can always go through here on the main page if you have actually Ethereum, like I have in my wallet, there's an Ethereum market. There's a few markets. There's the US dollar tether market, there's an Ethereum market, and the Bitcoin market. So I don't really use the Ethereum market, but you can trade straight from Ethereum to whatever too. So like how I have Ethereum now, it would trade straight from Ethereum into 10x just based on Ethereum price and 10x price instead of using your um, Bitcoins and Satoshis that way. And if we go into the US dollar tether market, if you have Bitcoins, Litecoins, OMG coins, anything of that, you can search for them here. So if I search for Ethereum, which is what I have under the US dollar tether market, I could essentially sell my Ethereum for US dollar tethers. So if you are in a situation where the market might be getting volatile, where you think Ethereum is going to drop 5, 10, 15%, you want to just kind of pull your money out into a stable currency, 
now stable i'm using that very loosely because it is associated with us dollar tether like i was talking about with the whole bitfinex and it's not really a a very solid backing behind it there's a lot of kind of uh controversy about it it's it's a risk either way whether you want to go into us dollar tether and it could completely collapse when you move into it or you could keep your money in whatever currency you have and it could go down it's 10 15 20 percent or whatever but if you do go into your U.S. dollar tether, um, the main idea of it is to hold value of whatever you transferred into it. So if I transfer a thousand dollars into U.S. dollar tethers, I will get one thousand U.S. dollar tether coins. And after the market drops or does whatever I I wanted to do, I could essentially come into here and buy back my Ethereum or go look at maybe OMG and I could buy into OMG or whatever tokens I want straight from us dollar tethers which would essentially be tied to a us dollar as a one-to-one -one, is a one dollar equals one us dollar tether so it would just be buying straight into its actual face value price instead of using an alternate cryptocurrency to trade for it if you are looking to sustain whatever you have in your portfolio over possible volatile areas it's risky but transferring into us dollar tether is a way to do it and bitfinex or bitrix gives you that option i think that is what we've got for the most part today if there's any other questions you guys have about bitrix or any problems you guys have run into while using bitrix like i said i've never come into any problems never had to fill out any support tickets or anything like that um, that's why I continue to use Bitrix and that's why I made this video so you guys could learn the basics of how to use it, sign up for it, and enjoy this great exchange that I've taken advantage of for a while and I think you should too. At the end of this, we always want to make sure we log out and that's going to be the end of it guys. You have a great day and enjoy.